Welcome to the Imaginarium. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Goodwin. I'm a author, psychiatrist, lecturer, and here on this channel, I discuss the mind, dreams, myth, mental health, and also fantasy because I'm a fantasy author as well. I have a debut novel, King of the Forgotten Darkness, comes out on the 1st of April next year, 2025. So this is going to be the first of nine videos where I talk about dream interpretation uh, methods and we're going to start off with what is a dream. Now, my methods of explaining this come from psychodynamic psychotherapy, from a bunch of scholarly research that I've written about this. You can find out about all that stuff, including my fantasy novel, on my website, ericgoodwin.com. And this is also from years of experience working with patients, asking about dreams, comparing it to their clinical experience, so forth and so on. So. Boiling all of that stuff down, what is a dream is actually a really interesting question. Dreams, as it turns out, are a part of a type of thing called spontaneous thought. Now, what is that? Spontaneous thought is a type of thinking that is, you guessed it, spontaneous. But what does that mean? Well, it means that if you think about the kind of things that are in your mind at any given time in terms of your conscious experience, there are not only conscious thoughts that you direct with your will, but there's also thoughts that just sort of pop into your head unbidden. That second type is what I'm talking about when I say spontaneous thoughts. Now, there's a huge amount of literature on the subject of spontaneous thought. And again, if you want a whole lot more information on this, I suggest you check out my website and you can look at some of the scholarly articles that I've published on this subject. And you can see all kinds of sources that I use there. Long story short, spontaneous thoughts are not random. They are not just wish fulfillments, but they actually have a function. So as it turns out, spontaneous thoughts have a function. And it, during the day and at night, basically all the time, your brain is constantly trying to process all the information that it's absorbed from the last few days and also much further than that into a coherent narrative. So what the brain is doing is it's putting together a story about your current situation, both the inner situation and the outer situation. So inner dynamics, inner conflicts, emotions, but also all the things that are going through your life right now. It takes the events from your autobiographical memory including your semantic and your innate and your procedural memory and all that kind of stuff. And it breaks it up into chunks, reconstitutes it into new stories of a symbolic nature. So a dream is really an as if type of story. It takes your autobiographical story. The brain puts things together in stories and autobiographical memory is a story also. And it takes it, then it says, I'm going to break that up and construct a new story that's symbolic in nature that expresses the meaning of what my story is. So dreams are especially pure from this point of view because there's no ego direction of the contents. This process, however, doesn't just happen at night while we're asleep. This process happens all the time in the background. And in therapy, there's a thing you can do um, called active imagination to get at some of this content. It's basically stuff that the unconscious is putting together and it's directed at organizing everything that's happened to you up to this point and trying to make sense of it to answer this following question. Basically, who am I? It's ordering all the chaos and asking that very question. It says, who am I? What am I trying to do in life? Where am I going in life? Now you might ask, why does it use symbols? Why is it metaphorical? And that's just because the mind has this process of simplifying that involves taking vast swaths of complex and sometimes even contradictory data and trying to put it together into a more palatable form that the ego consciousness can then make sense of and use. And the way it does is, is it takes all of this data and puts it into a visual spatial image. So for example, if I'm going through a whole lot of uh, big decisions in life, then it will most likely put together a, a story of I'm walking along a road and I see 
many different pathways before me. So you can see that this is, it's a visual metaphor of this thing that I'm going through. Dreams do this all the time. Uh, another example would be where I have an inner conflict, right? I feel one way very strongly about something and I feel also almost the opposite way about that very something. So maybe I'm in a relationship and I want to stay with this person, but I also want to leave this person. Well, the way that the mind puts that together into a dream or spontaneous narrative is you will engage in a conversation with another person who takes the opposite point of view. So if you're more leaning towards staying, then you'll end up arguing with a person who wants you to leave. That's one way that this happens sometimes. Another thing that happens is you might actually be arguing with one person who says stay and another person who says leave and you're stuck in the middle. So that's another way this happens. Dreams basically give you a picture of your current situation up to now. And of course, we're doing this all the time because there's always new information pouring in every single day. It puts together all of the stuff that's happened to us in something called memory consolidation to create the story of what has happened. But then the dream takes it one step further and it says, okay, that's what happened, but I don't need to know what it means. So I might go through in the previous uh, crossroads example, my autobiograph autobiographical memory will then put together a laundry list of most important events that have happened to me up till now related to that big choice that's ahead of me. But in terms of what has actually happened, so I'll be able to access that and I'll look back and I'll go, okay, so that's what happened. That was why I wanted to go this direction. That was another thing that happened to me that made me want to choose a different direction. But then the dream will say, all right, that's fine. That's all well and good, but what does it really mean? And what it really means is the image that you'll see in a dream. Okay. Now, an interesting thing about dreams is that they are very emotionally driven. Our memory is also very emotionally driven and in intense affect will much more likely uh, makes things that happen to us be recallable in memory. In other words, if, if, something happens to us that's very emotional, it'll be much easier to remember. But another way of saying that is when it's super emotional, it's much more likely to wind up in autobiographical memory as part of our personal story of us. So in one way, you could say that the autobiographical memory is the story of who you are and the dream is the myth of who you are. It's the fairy tale of who you are. Because a lot of times dreams will use fantastical imagery because it can, right? A metaphor, I don't have to be completely uh, attached to physical limitations. I can do things like maybe I have a new found sense of freedom. Well, then I'll dream about being able to fly. It's as if I can go anywhere, right? So in this way, then dreams give us a very, very true picture of how we feel as long as you remember that it's a metaphor. If you take it literally, it becomes pure nonsense. And yet, if you take it as a symbol, then all the things sort of fall together. Now, how this, this actually plays out in our popular fiction media and in storytelling, and this is kind of where my uh, fantasy fiction author uh, side of myself comes to play, because you can use this kind of thing, especially in fantasy, that's my chosen genre, where you can depict emotional realities using metaphors and symbols in a way that actually shows how, how much more powerful they can be. And it can communicate that through the image in a way that's very true to the emotion. And it's, it's an advantage that fantasy has over other genres, which is probably one of the reasons why fantasy is such a popular genre. It's the original one. I mean, Terry Pratchett's got a famous uh, quote about that and how, our first, very first stories around a campfire hundreds of thousands of years ago were all fantasies. But this is why. This is why. It's because the brain is set up to think this way. Our, human, our whole human spirit is wrapped up in this way of thinking. So to recap, dream is a part of an ongoing process that the brain uses to construct a meaningful and coherent summary of what is going on in your life up to the present. It incorporates the most emotionally relevant elements of the past, but that's it. 
there's very little else that it recalls from the past. Only emotionally powerful elements stay. And it's always intensely occupied with your current emotional concerns, whatever they might be. The dream's form is that of a story where you are the POV character, almost always. And though it takes elements of your life history and so-called day residue, it's not a simple repeating of those things. It uses them creatively to generate a new symbolic story. So whereas your memory is a sort of what happened to me story, the dream is a this is what my life means right now kind of story. And to do that, it has to use images and symbols in a strongly embodied way, meaning that the symbols are emotional body symbols. They're condensed expressions of our emotional and embodied reality and images. So in the following videos, we're going to get into a lot of examples of what I'm talking about. We're going to talk about dream characters, the persona, the shadow, environments as states of mind, um, archetypes, archetypal narratives, big dreams and little dreams, the divine child, animus and anima, God and the self, the spiritual dimension of dreams, that is, um, alchemy. And finally, we'll end on active imagination, which is basically dreaming while you're awake. So I hope you'll stick around and check out the rest of the series. I'm going to try to keep these videos concise, but full of great information so that you can use it to help sort out your own dreams, other people's dreams. If you're a therapist, you can use this to help with that as well. Or maybe you're an artist and someone who's just into creative writing, and you can use this for that as well. And so there it is for today. And until next time, I'll see you later.